welcome back to the fourth video for topic 4 software and this time we're going to be looking at types of programming language we're going to be looking at translators and we're going to be looking at IDEs this is for the IGCSE computer science course from Cambridge the previous three videos covered this first part this is a big section but we're going to try and whiz through it because most of it's fairly straightforward now as you're aware people use many different languages to communicate with each other in order for two people to understand each other they need to speak the same language or another person an interpreter is needed to translate from one language to another programmers use many different programming languages to communicate with computers but these are generally higher level languages as we can see here programming languages can be split up into three categories high level language assembly language and machine code language computers only understand their own language this is machine code which is usually either binary or hexadecimal a program needs to be translated from one of these other two languages into machine code in order for a computer to be able to understand it but what is a program why do we need programs what are we doing programming well programs are our way of telling a computer what to do how to do it and when to do it this enables a single computer to perform many, many, many different tasks. A computer, for example, can, use, can be used to stream videos, uh, write reports, provide weather forecasts, such as this here, and many, many, many other jobs. Previously, we looked at the three categories of programming languages. High-level programming languages, assembly languages, and machine code. Now, we can group machine code and assembly language into um, low-level languages. And I've got an example of um, assembly language here. On the um, underneath this, we've got um, a high-level language, maybe Python. As I said before, these are simple instructions that a computer understands. Assembly language um, does need to be translated into machine code, though, before it can be understood. Machine code programmers do not usually write in machine code, as it is difficult to understand. As I say, it's only binary or hexadecimal, and it can be complicated to manage data manipulation and storage. Assembly languages, fewer programmers write programs in assembly language. Those programmers who do, do so for the following reasons. To make use of special hardware, to make use of special machine dependent instructions, to write code that doesn't take up much space in primary memory, and to write code that performs a task very, very quickly. And here, let's say we have an example of assembly language, LDA, all these little acronyms stand for a particular process, for example, LDA would stand for load, and it's going to load this, whatever this instruction is, into memory. Now these you'll be more familiar with, obviously high-level languages. You should have used some on, on your course. High-level languages enable programmers to focus on problems to be solved and require no knowledge of the hardware and instruction sets of the computer that will use this program. Many high-level programming languages are portable and can be used on different types of computers. For example, if you write a Python program on a MacBook, you can send that to somebody who's using a, a Windows machine and they will be able to open it and run it and use it. High-level languages are designed with programmers in mind. Programming statements are more easy to understand than those written in a, a low-level language. This means that programs written in a high-level language are easier to read and understand as the language is closer to English. They can be written in a shorter amount of time they can be debugged at the development stage and they can be maintained once they have uh, once they're in use here are a couple of examples of high level languages which you, you may be familiar with we've got scratch a block based coding tool and we've got um, an example of python written in idle ide and as you can see it's the same program just created in two different ways uh, from multiplication times table so what are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, for a high-level language, it is independent of the type of computer being used. As I said before, it can be written on a Mac, it can be written on a Windows machine, written on anything. Um, easy to read, write, and understand the program. Programs are easier and quicker to debug. It's easier to maintain programs in use. The disadvantage, however, is programs can be larger. Programs can take longer to execute. Programs may not be able to make use of special hardware. Now, low-level languages, obviously this will be the complete opposite. They can make use of special hardware. They include special machine-dependent instructions. 
certainly assembly languages we're talking here can write code that doesn't take up much space in primary memory can write code that performs a task very very quickly obviously it takes longer time to write and debug programs programs are more difficult to understand the second part translators and I'm not talking about a translator such as this where we're translating French into into English I'm talking about these three types of translators that are needed by a computer compilers interpreters and assemblers these all turn high-level or assembly language into machine code a compiler um, this is a translator that takes a high-level programming language such as C++ and translates it into machine language or sometimes assembly language which the computer can understand it converts the high-level language into machine code all in one go so that it can be directly used by a computer to perform a required task once converted the code can be run unassisted at any time this process is called compilation if errors are detected, then an error report is produced instead of a compiled program. Another example is an interpreter. An interpreter, is, again, is a computer program that reads a statement from a program written in a high-level language, but this time it does it one instruction at a time, basically one line at a time. It is similar to human translator translating when a person says um, into another language sentence by sentence as they speak. The resulting code is then executed immediately. The process is called interpretation. If there is an error in the statement, then execution ceases and an error message is output, sometimes with a suggested correction. The program needs to be interpreted again each time it is run. So this is doing it line by line rather than all in one go. And finally, assemblers, the third type of translator, the purpose of an assembler is to turn a um, an assembly language such as this one into machine code so a summary of the differences compilers they translate a high-level language into machine code an executable file of machine code is produced one high-level language statement can be translated into several machine code instructions compiled programs are run without the compiler a compiled program is usually distributed for general use whereas an interpreter executes a high-level language program one statement at a time no executable file of machine code is produced one high-level language program statement may require several machine code instructions to be executed interpreted programs cannot be run without the interpreter an interpreter is often used when a program is being developed and finally assemblers this translates a low-level assembly language into machine code an executable file of machine code is produced one low-level language statement is usually translated into one machine code instruction. Assembled programs are used without the assembler. An assembled program is usually distributed for general use. And if we talk about the advantages and disadvantages, uh, first of all of the, of the compiler and the interpreter, an advantage would be a compiled program can be stored ready for use. A compiled program can be executed without the compiler. A compiled program takes up less space in memory when it is executed. A compiled program is executed in a shorter amount of time. The disadvantage though, it takes a longer time to write, test and debug these programs during the development stage. Whereas the interpreter is much easier and quicker to debug and test programs during development. It's easier to edit programs during the development stage, but programs cannot be run without the interpreter and programs can take longer to execute. The third and final part of this video is IDEs, Integrated Development Environments. We've got two examples here. I've got the top one is PyCharm, and then we've got Python idle at the bottom here. Now, an IDE is used by programmers to aid the writing and development of code. They're designed to bring together all programming tasks in one application. One of the main benefits of the IDE is that they offer a central interface with all the tools a developer will need. There are many different types of IDE available. Some just support one programming language. Others can be used for several different programming languages. You may be familiar with PyCharm. Um, for Python, Visual Studio for Visual Basic or BlueJ for Java. These are all different types of IDEs. So what features usually come with an IDE? We have a code editor, a translator, a debugger, error diagnostics, auto completion, auto correction, an auto documenter, 
and finally pretty printing for example the code editors are designed for writing and editing source code these editors are distinguished from text editors because work to either simplify or enhance the process of writing and editing um, the code for developers as you can see here nice and easily readable easily formatted we've got different colors going on to identify strings variables functions so on and so forth a translator as, we've, as it's translated the program here transforms source code um, that is written in human uh, readable writable language in a form that the computer can read and execute a debugger these are used during testing and can and can help developers debug their application programs and as I said before the final thing pretty printing I've, I've just mentioned but this is um, where it, everything is color coded so it is easy to follow and understand ladies and gentlemen that is it for this video I hope you found it useful um, thank you very much indeed for watching please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee I'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed see you next time bye for now